Hello everyone, I've got Mr. Incredible with me, and today I'm going to show you how to implement the logic for the Jungle Cruise ride in my Adventureland toy box. So we'll head on in here, and to save some time, I've already placed most of the creativity toys that we're going to need, uh, actually all of them, and in doing this I've saved about 30 minutes worth of time, so you don't have to spend 30 minutes watching me hook all of this. Uh, preliminary stuff up. But anyway, we have a button down here. I've placed the path creator here, and I'll show you that in a minute, as well as the pirate's dock rowboat. Coming around this way, we have a trigger area. This is the first of four trigger areas. So this is trigger area number one. We have a friendly wave generator connected to the locator up there, and you can see from the little blue dot on it which way it's pointing. I have four vehicle summoners and four locators out here. I'll just kind of show you where the little blue dots are pointing on each of these. That one's pointed that way. And I've connected each of these up to one of those locators. I also have a logic gate here. I have another friendly wave generator up here connected to those two locators. Trigger area number two is right here. Coming around this bend we have two more vehicle summoners connected to those locators. And you can see which way the dots are facing on those and a logic gate. Trigger area number three is right over here, just before you get into this little cave area. Over here we have another friendly wave generator connected to three locators. So those two there, and one over at Trader Sam's. And that would be right here. And trigger area number four is right there. So those are all the creativity toys that we need. And let me show you next the path. So I've connected up the path. The first point goes right here on the seam for these two river pieces. And I'll give you a little bit of an idea here where it is. It's right after these two uh, roof tiles here. The next point we're building going this direction. This is right on the seam. This one is just a little bit before the seam. And again, you can pause this video at any time to see exactly where these are placed. This one is a little bit after the seam. But you can see how I'm trying to keep the points right in the middle of the river. And that's really important because you don't want the boat to go outside the river. So this is where you're going to place your points. And you'll notice I don't have a point here in the middle of these river pieces. I did over here because this gets a little tricky when you're winding around. But over here it's just a straight turn and a straight turn and a straight turn. And there's straight sections after them, so I didn't have to put in as many points. Now over here, this section of the river gets a little bit twisty, so we have some additional points in here to make sure the path follows the river where I want it to go. And this one is a little bit past the seam. The next one's a little hard to see, but it's right here on the terrain seam. This one is a little bit behind the, the terrain seam there. And again, we get twisty here, so we have some points in the middle to try to help get around this curve. And then we come back. And for the properties on the path creator, 
I have it set with active on, speed of 50, the looped flag is on, and you want to make sure auto start objects when connected is off. All right, before we hook everything up, let me just show you the properties I've set on some of these as well. And we'll begin with this friendly wave generator over here. So for the wave on this one, I've configured it with one Tigger. And of course, if you click this, you got to scroll through that long list. So that's why I set this up ahead of time. So you didn't have to watch me scroll through that. Here's how the properties are set. And for the generated friend options, I have the behavior set to stand still. Okay. On this friendly wave generator over here, this wave is configured with two flint costumes. And the properties are set the same way. Generated friend options, though, I have their behavior set to jump up. So they're going to jump up and down. And the last friendly wave generator over here at the cannibal camp. I have the wave set up with three Tonto costumes. And for the properties, they're set the same way. Generation delay to zero, by the way. And generated friend options, I have their behavior set to angry. Okay, and I just remembered one thing I forgot to do <laughs> on all of these vehicle summoners for the properties on those. You want to make sure all of these are set like you see here, and these are the defaults. So actually, there's nothing I need to do here. So that's good. Off, off, and loop. All right. So to hook all of this up, it's not very difficult. That is the time consuming part of it right there, is just setting the properties and configuring all the waves. So the first thing we're gonna do is connect our little rowboat here to the path creator. And some of you have asked why I'm using this uh, toy, which by the way, is from the Pirates of the Caribbean set and it's out of building sets group four. Some of you have asked why I'm using that and not the Splash Mountain log. There's two reasons for that. One is that this toy takes up a lot less memory than a vehicle, which again, if you look at the memory meter on my right, it's getting up there. A vehicle would make that jump significantly and probably use up half of my remaining memory, which isn't good. And the second reason is, is because when you're riding in a vehicle, it's a lot harder to look around and admire the scenery. It wants to keep you focused straight ahead. So that's why I'm using this little rowboat. So we're gonna do a new path connection on that. Connect it up to our toy box path. And under the properties, toy box path, we're gonna orient along the path, which causes it to go sideways <laughs> initially. Um, and then 0, 0, 100, these are all fine. Vertical offset, I'm going to set to minus 1 to kind of put it down in the water. We have to change the rotation to 90 to get it to orient in the right direction. And movement style is loop. So now this will orient around the path and stay focused going forward. And then to get that started, it's just a simple logic connection on the button. A new logic connection when pressed. We come over to our path creator and do a reset and play. And that starts the boat. And then you can wait for it to come along and jump on it. And there you go. All right, when we get over to this trigger area, we need to do a number of things. I want to generate Tigger. I want to generate the apes over here at the uh, camp. And we need to generate the elephants at the elephant pool. And so what we're going to do, 
I'm going to go to this trigger area to do that. This is trigger area number one. We're going to do a new logic connection when entered by player any. First thing we're going to do is come over to our friendly wave generator for Tigger and generate the wave. And back on trigger area number one, new logic connection when entered by player any. We want to come over here and generate the elephants. And I'm going to use a logic gate to do this because I only want to do this one time. So we're going to input into this gate. If you have two players and they're both on that rowboat, when the second player enters, we're going to end up with actually two elephants at each locator, <laughs> which is crazy. So we want to make sure we only do this once. That's why I'm using the logic gate. We don't need to do that with the friendly wave generators, by the way, because once you generate the wave, this toy won't do anything else until that wave is defeated. So trying to generate a second wave won't do anything. So we don't need a logic gate in that case. But on this one, on this logic gate, we do a new logic connection on output. You're going to come over to each of these four vehicle summoners. You're going to scroll down to mounts. And you're going to use the elephant. And you got to scroll down a little ways to get to him. And again, you're going to do the, that same connection for each of these four uh, vehicle summoners. And I won't make you watch me do all of these. You can do that yourself. All right, the last thing trigger area number one needs to do, do a new logic connection when entered by player any we need to come over to the camp and generate that wave. That'll put the monkeys in there, the apes. And there we go. So then the player rides around, they're admiring that. Once they round this bend, they're kind of out of sight of all of those. And so we can take those out to save memory. And that's one of the reasons why we have trigger area number two here. So on trigger area number two, we're going to do a new logic connection when entered by player any. We'll come over here and defeat the wave, which will take Tigger out. And we'll also do a new logic connection when entered by player any. Come over and defeat that wave. And I just realized I forgot something over here. I told you why I'm using the gate, but <laughs> it's not actually helping us right now. So on the first vehicle summoner here, we're going to do a new logic connection. When that toy, that elephant, is generated, we're going to turn around and close this gate. That's what ensures that all of these only get generated one time if you have two players passing through trigger area number one. All right. So that means over here on trigger area number two, we need to do a new logic connection when entered by player any. You're going to do several things. You're going to come to each of these vehicle summoners and remove all. You'll make that same logic connection for the other three. And we're also going to reopen that gate. So a new logic connection when entered by player any. We'll come back over here and open up the logic gate. So if they want to ride this ride multiple times, They'll see the elephants each time. All right. Now the next thing trigger area number two needs to do is set up the zebras around the bend. So we'll do a new logic connection when entered by player any. 
we're going to come over and input into this gate and we're basically going to do the same thing that we just did for the elephants. So on output from this gate we'll come over to each of these vehicle summoners scroll down to mounts and do the Toy Story Zebra. And I'll go ahead and do both of those because this is an easy connection here. I don't have to do a lot of scrolling. Mounts and Zebra. And just like before on the first one here, we'll do a new logic connection when generated. Turn around and close this gate so we only do this once. All right, that's everything for trigger area number two. So they ride around, they see the zebras, and then they pass through trigger area number three. So this one needs to do two sets of things. First, we need to take the zebras out. So a new logic connection when entered by player any. Once again, you're going to come over to both of these vehicle summoners go all the way to the bottom and remove all. You'll make that same connection for the other one. And then a new logic connection when entered by player any. We come over to our logic gate and reopen it. So again, if they want to ride this ride a second time, they'll see the zebras. And then the last thing we need to do with trigger area number three is generate the cannibals up around the next bend. So a new logic connection when entered by player any. We come over to this friendly wave generator and generate that wave. And that's it for trigger area number three. So they ride through here, look at the cannibals. And when they get to this trigger area, we'll take the cannibals out. So a new logic connection when entered by player any. We'll come back over here and defeat the wave. And that's it. That is the logic for the ride. The logic's pretty straightforward when you just kind of follow your way around the ride. It's not too difficult to do. And with that, the Jungle Cruise ride is done. Before you go, let me remind you that if you're following along and building this toy box on your own system, you can find logic diagrams on my blog to help you out. The link is in the video description. Next time, I'll hook up the remaining logic for this toy box and then it'll be finished. You won't want to miss that, so be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done that already. Take care.